It's always been important not only to teach but to defend truth, and in our time that need seems to be growing. I believe that most, if not all, of the truth we are able to discover comes through divine help. Whether we recognize it or not, all truth, including the truth that governs our present sphere, exists independent and apart. It is unaffected by my preference or your opinion. It stands independent of any effort to control or change it. It cannot be lobbied or influenced in any way. It is a fixed reality. Moral relativism has made great inroads in our time. Not judging has become an almost unchallengeable standard for conversation and behavior. But in reality, we all make judgments about what is right and wrong, and not just for ourselves, but for the people and the society around us. Moral relativism just doesn't work if there is to be order and justice in society. Can murder be wrong for most but right for some? Is a thief entitled to keep what he steals and continue stealing because he believes robbery is right for him, especially since he grew up in an underprivileged circumstance? Or taking note of something very much in the news today, is a man entitled to sexually harass a woman because he finds it consistent with his personal sense of right and wrong? Our calling, and it is ever more urgent in this environment, is to teach the truth of moral concepts, what they are, how far they extend. We prize truth on any subject from any source, but eternal truth, especially as it bears on the meaning and the purpose and the conduct of life we must obtain from God. Pew Research recently reported that for the first time, a majority of Americans, 56%, say it is not necessary to have religious belief to be a good person. God is not a prerequisite for good values and morality, said Greg Smith, Pew's associate director of research, in his post about the findings. I'm sure we would agree that people who are atheists or who have otherwise no professed religion or religious belief can be, most often are, good and upright people. But we would not agree that this happens without God. As noted earlier, whether someone likes it or not, believes it or not, or is even aware of it or not, he or she is imbued with the light of Christ and therefore possesses a common sense of right and wrong that we sometimes call conscience.